Welcome everyone to the latest Lord of the Rings online gameplay guide. I am your host Renfail and today we are here for the ultimate lore master class guide for those of you who might never have played this class before. I'm here on my level 99 lore master just outside of Osgiliath in Minas Tirith uh, in Gondor and uh, I wanted to talk about the changes that have been made to this class over the years and the way it plays as of April 2023. Now obviously they will continue to make changes and balance passes to these classes over the years which is why I think it's helpful to come out with a new class guide every year uh, as often as possible. I haven't actually done one in a couple of years. I missed 2022 so we're back with the 2023 edition was what we're talking about today. Um, so welcome. We're gonna be diving into the lore master here uh, in Lord of the Rings Online. If this is your first time here, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update as we continue to do class guides, not only for this game, but also Star Wars Republic and other games that we play. I play a lot of RPGs, MMORPGs, tabletop games, everything, really. I do books, shows, TV, films, all sorts of fun stuff, so make sure to check out the other playlists. And don't forget to support if you can with Super Chat, Super Thanks, memberships here on the channel or the Patreon page. That's it for the intro. Let's dive into the meat of the matter. Now, if you have never played a lore master before, here's a basic breakdown of the class. They are primarily a DPS class with utility and can do crowd control. They are really the only class that can do dedicated crowd control, uh, either with a single target mez or a group mez. Both have limited time durations, so it's not like it's an unlimited crowd control. But again, primarily DPS class, with some utility, they could do some backup heals and crowd control. And more importantly, they are the only class in the game that has a dedicated pet. Now you can choose from a wide variety of pets. Um, I like to use my cat pet as often as possible, but the different animal companions that you have, it just kind of depends on what you want out of it. Um, you've got your eagle friend, which is, as in it mentions here in the description text, a noble friend, a noble creature which could deal damage and if called upon, sacrifice itself to save you so it will res you if you fall in combat. You also have the feline hunters, which are um, DPS animals, but also um, you'll notice there are some debuffs, or excuse me, some um, some additional buffs they add here. Uh, so for example, the Eagle Friend gives you additional gust of wind damage and 5% critical chance. The Sabertooth Cat gives you a negative 10% to all skill indexes, so that's a, a increased cast time, as with 50%, 15% fire damage over time. Then we have the Lynx Companion, which is the same thing, just a different view. Um, Bear Friend, which is your pet tank, um, it can do taunts and stuff, and it gets gives you plus five max morale and uh, tactical and physical mitigation. There's lots of different types of pets that you can have. You're not limited to only these ones. However, these are the ones that I use on a regular basis. Nine times out of ten, I'm going to be using my Lynx or my Eagle Friend. Um, we already saw the Sable. This is what my uh, Lynx looks like. Good old scratch. And then, of course, if I want to um, use my eagle, I have the improved eagle friend. I have the, the white eagle um, as opposed to the brown eagle. You can change the cosmetics of your pets as you go along. Um, but yeah, they are a dedicated pet class, and so you can rely upon them to do lots of fun stuff with DPS and your pets. And then depending on how you're playing, are you playing solo, are you playing in a group? Your style of gameplay is going to change what type of pet you might want to use. So that's just a side consideration of how the Lore Master plays. Looking at the different types of animals that you can summon, we've got bears, we've got ravens, we've got the friend of nature, which is a bog guardian. Um, I've got the lynx, we've got the eagle friend, we've got the improved commune with nature, which is a spirit companion, uh, improved friend of the feline hunters, which is your um, saber tooth cat. We have an additional saber tooth cat, which is a spotted one, the improved eagle friend, um, and of course this one, which I love, which is a murder of crows, which summons a whole bunch of animals at your disposal. So all of these are the various types of pets that you can summon um, based on the current level of my character, which is 99. Next up for the lore master is how do you spec your lore master because this is going to be the next area of 
debate for a lot of people. Um, how are you choosing to run your trait trees? So if you've never played the game before, there are three different lines, these three different trait trees, commonly known as the blue line, the red line, and the yellow line. The blue line being the keeper of animal line, the red line being the master of nature's fury, and the ancient master being the lore master, which is mostly about crowd control and utility. So you've got a keeper of animals, which is the spec that I choose to run because I primarily play my lore master as a solo character. I primarily play by myself. And as such, I wanted my pets to be the most powerful possible so that they have the most survivability the best taunts, do the most damage, so on and so forth, because I want my pet to act as the primary tank for me or the primary DPS for me so that we can very quickly handle most encounters. So I chose to run through the blue line first. Now, having run my lore master in the past with a group, I find that the red line is a good option if you're going to be in a group as a DPS class. But if you're going to be in your group as the crowd controller and utility, you're going to want to run the yellow line. These two are going to depend on what type of fellowship you're going to be running with. I've traditionally found in the past that if I'm just running with two or three of my friends, I can stay in the blue line and just have my pets be the best possible. If I'm in a full group and they want me in the DPS slot, I could switch over to the red line. And then if I need, if they need me to do crowd control because we have a dedicated DPSers in the group, then I just go over to yellow line in the past. Now, I haven't run with a fellowship in quite some time, so I'm not worried about these additional specs for the moment. You can, of course, run two specs at any given time, with the third being unlocked through Mithril Coins if you want to. I've never needed to run a third line um, in all the time I've played. But, again, three different specs depending on what you want to get out of your Lore Master playthrough. I have found that in the early stages of the game, it's better f pretty much across the board to stick with the Keeper of Animals as your primary sort of leveling spec. This is my opinion only for this ultimate uh, class guide because you're going to get the most survivability out of this build because of the way you get your pets. So for example, you know, this one gives your pets 25% morale as you um, level it up over the first five ranks plus minus 5% of the damage they take. And then you get this one which um, lowers their attack speed or... or, or gives it makes them five percent faster and also makes them do 25 percent more damage so your first 10 points right out of the bat are giving your pet 25 percent more hit points they take five percent less damage they do attacks five percent more quickly and they do 25 percent more damage it's very useful to put your first 10 points there and from there you can go in um you know inner flame is a good one because that gives you your healing so if you've never used the inner flame before um I can't remember where it's at on my hotbar. It's this one right here. Use power to heal morale for both yourself and your companion, and it tears up to a damage buff over several seconds. So this does um, a heal every second. So at the current level I'm at, it does 7,800 to 11,200. And then on use every one second, plus 12% fire type damage, plus 12% lightning type damage for 20 seconds. So it's a very useful skill. Actually, we can just use that real quickly and give you a, a, a look at what that looks like. Should you, it's a channeled ability that's going to heal you very quickly. It's a very it's a very quick cast. But now we've got this buff on us that allows us to cast some extra damage for the next few moments. So that's one of those things to pay attention to. Beyond that, there's just all these different buffs you can get. Um, I love this one because it's prepared materials because um, it gives you a 15% haste to all of your skill inductions. Um, which is amazing just for cast times. So there's all sorts of fun stuff that you get. Um, across the Keeper of Animal lines, including the Hardy Diet ones, um, which boost the max morale of your pet and yourself. That max rank, you're also getting a 5% morale bonus on top of the, you know, nearly 1,500 of maximum morale that we're getting here. So just Keeper of Animals, as I said, I think that's the best leveling spec, at least in the early stages of the game, um, until you find out if you're going to be playing with a group or not. And then if I were you, I would be running the two specs. I would be running the blue line and the red line. Honestly, the crowd control line is only going to be necessary if you have a full fellowship and they want you running debuffs and crowd control. Otherwise, it's not that big of a deal. It's better to just do DPS for your groups uh, and go from there. So, food for thought. Um, you've also got your rate tra race traits. Excuse me. I like Lori of the First, um, which um, I think is um, pretty fun. Um, 
you may periodically immobilize a foe, so it's a three second stun, which interrupts and mezzes. Um, a 10% out of combat run speed because I'm a high elf. I find that incredibly useful. Uh, travel to Karis Galadhan, which gives me back to Lothlorien, which is a fun little perk that you get. Those who remain, plus 189 will, and of course, Enmity of Darkness, which gives me plus 5% to light type damage. And of course, you can have, you know, other ones in here, like the Blade Dancer, if you want to do um, additional sword damage for DPS. Um, and honestly, this is one of those things where if I know I'm not going to be traveling anytime soon, I can always switch this out between travel to Karis Galadhan and just boom. Now I've got that inherent 5% bonus to swords which is helpful for DPS. And then as far as my trait trees, I run Wisdom, um, my Virtue Traits, excuse me, I run Wisdom, Charity, Loyalty, Fortitude, and Fidelity. But you can do whatever you want here. This does not really affect your character at all. This is mostly just additional fluff to help um, flesh your character out. So that would be the breakdown of the class traits, the race traits, and the Virtue Traits for the lore master now of course no video would be complete no class guide would be complete if we didn't go get into a little bit of combat to show you guys how the class plays but i love this view over osgiliath here because you've got the nazgul flying around up in the air there's ash falling down um because of you know what's going on with the storyline hang on i moved my mouse there um this is just a really amazing view of the osgiliath and flames and we're about to go down in there and have a little bit of fun here in a moment so let's run down the hill break my leg probably <laughs> of course but i just i wanted to share that view with you guys because i think it's pretty cool to be able to see um the nazgul flying around and just the look of osgiliath um really creepy time to be in gondor because of what's going on here so let's go in here and see if we can't find some trouble to get into all right we've got Eastern Warrior up ahead. All right, we took care of him. But what about what if we've got multiples? So one of the things I like to do with this is just me personally is you can send your pet in so that they can attack first and they'll take all the damage. And then you can choose to, say, mesmerize one of the mobs, take out the third, and we'll focus on this one for the moment. We got both of these back here in the back. Drop some AoEs. Oh, he's already dead. Boom. So as you can see, the DPS is pretty good, and because I can crowd control, that archer was down the whole time we were fighting. And now that we're ready to fight, we can go back into it, and then we can move up here and mez one of the captains, take the other one. Now these are a little bit more challenging. These are signature mobs, so let's see how we fare against one of these. Now our Mez is about to wear off, so we're going to recast the Mez on the other guy. Back to this one. So this is a slightly tougher mob. Now when I'm done with this, I'm going to go ahead and do my um, Inner Flame so we can heal up real quick. And then we're going to go back to attacking this guy, the Morgul Captain. Now I'm going to use Murder of Crows on here because I want to I wanna watch you guys. I want to show you guys how we can melt a mob. Here comes the Murder of Crows. Bye bye, Morgul Captain. <laughs> and that is one of the reasons I love the Lore Master, everybody. It's a very, very versatile class, very high survivability. You can handle, I would say, on average, you can do half a dozen mobs as long as you're paying attention because we also have this um, Bane Flare, which um, mezzes up to five targets. Now, it doesn't last for a long time. Um, you'll notice that it's only got a 15 second daze on it. So you would throw this up in the air, boom. You know, a light flare, it mezzes five mobs. You can focus on the sixth, and then you can go down here and re-mez with the blinding flash as necessary. You will end up fighting a couple at the same time. But you've also got an array of uh, AoEs at your disposal, like um, Sticky Gourd, which is amazing, uh, combined with Gust of Wind and your Cracked Earth. So um, not only do you have your single target DPS, you also have your AoE DPS. Matter of fact, let's see if I can find really quick... 
let's show you what it looks like when we do an AoE. Um, now, this could get a little hairy, uh, depending if there's signature mobs in the group. So, there's a captain over there, which we need to be careful about. So, let's... Here's what I want to do. I actually want to pull these guys back, if I can. Now, they're skirmishers, so they're going to... All right, here we go. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pull these up. We're going to drop this here. All right. We've got a few... Now, notice I'm losing health pretty quick here, so I'm going to go ahead and pop my inner flame. Ah! May need to do a blinding flash. And we're going to back out of that because that was a quite hairy encounter. So, you know, got to pay attention here. This is a signature mob, so we may have bit off more than we can chew. We used our council ability there. I'm going to single mez this Morgul captain. Take out the small guy over here. Drop another AoE. He's trying to heal. Now all my heals are down, so we need to burn this guy with Murder of Crows. And there you go. We just took down a pretty decent sized group with a few signature mobs in there. Now that was kind of hairy. I definitely uh, took some damage and I would need to, at this point, back out a little bit, find a safe spot and chomp some food so we can get some regen going. Drink some of my white puddings as well. Get a little bit of a buff going. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is a little bit of single combat, a little bit of group combat, a little of the versatility of the lore master in action and the survivability of the lore master. So that for me, everybody, is the lore master in a nutshell. This is my ultimate lore master guide, which hopefully can give you a little bit of insight into how to play this class. It's not my favorite class in the game. The favorite class, my favorite class in Lord of the Rings Online is the hunter. But I would argue that the Lore Master is a close second along with the Menstrual. I also love the Guardian, uh, the Champion. We'll be doing class guides for all of those, so make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon so that you can check out all of the Lord of the Rings Online content that I do. And if you would, please support the channel because it keeps me on the air full time and it keeps the bills paid so that I can keep doing these videos for you. You can do super thanks on these uploads and any sort of YouTube short that you see from me. You could do super chats on live streams and premieres. You can join as a member. There's three different tiers. We do private videos. Videos, polls and fun stuff for our community here and there is a patreon page where my wife and my brother and i have a tabletop game a point-and-click adventure game and a book series fantasy book series if you want to check that stuff out there's also a discord if you want to come game with us in the various games that we play until next time stay safe everybody and have fun in middle earth